Excited about another webinar. I'm Keith Wolf. I'm the Managing Director of Murray Resources. We're a Houston-based recruiting firm. And I'm also the CEO of Resume Spice. We're a career coaching and resume writing service. Now, before we get started, just have a few housekeeping items to go over. So the webinar is gonna be 60 minutes. We're gonna do our best end of 3 p.m. Central. We wanna make sure our speaker has all the time she needs to, to go over everything she's prepared without having to rush. And we're also gonna to try to answer as many live questions as we can. So please put them in the Q&A box and we'll answer them at the end of the presentation. Okay, this webinar is being recorded and you will be able to watch it later if you miss anything. So don't worry about that. And we are in a webinar format, so we cannot see you and we cannot hear you. There are over 400 people on this call. So we're gonna do our best to get through everything, but we're gonna need everybody on mute. So that way we can make sure we can hear our speaker. We'll be sharing the slides from this webinar with everyone who registered. And lastly, we're gonna have two drawings at the end. We haven't done this before, um, but our speaker today has donated a couple of gifts at the end. So you must be present and on the call to win. One speaker, sorry, one winner will get a signed copy of our speaker's book and one hour free coaching session with the speaker. And the second winner will get an Amazon gift certificate for $35. Okay, so I'm excited about today's webinar because there is so much out there about managing your employees, even managing your career, but not as much about managing up. Now, how do you manage your boss? And I don't know many professionals who really think about that. They might think about how to deal with their boss. Maybe they like their boss, maybe they don't. But being strategic about managing up is really, it's critical to your professional success. So today's talk is titled Managing Up, Developing Effective Relationships at All Levels. And our speaker is Margaret Johnson. Now Margaret is an author, trainer, and keynote speaker on creativity, risk-taking, and leadership. She partners with her clients to bust assumptions, apply creative genius to tackle issues, and develop courageous risk-taking to assist in solving problems. Margaret received her Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering from Michigan State University. And then as she says, she moved to Texas as fast as she could. She has her MBA from the University of Houston, Clear Lake, as well as her professional engineering license and corporate coaching credentials. So with that, she inspires people and organizations to move from SOS or same old stuff to wow, well on the way to where they wanna be. She's a published author from SOS to wow, your personal coaching adventure. And she enjoys golf, beaches, volunteering, and is also a certified group exercise instructor in indoor cycle, yoga, and weightlifting. And she loves spending time with her growing family. So thank you, Margaret, for taking time out of your busy schedule to speak with us today. And with that, the floor is yours. Welcome, hello everyone, howdy you guys. And howdy because I'm in Texas, and you guys because I'm from Michigan. What I'd like to ask each of you to do right now, if you would put in the chat, where are you Zooming in from? We'd like to see where everyone is coming from this afternoon. So just write in the chat, go blue. <laughs> Houston, Dallas. Pearland. Lots of Houstonites here. Seabrook, India, West Austin. All right, we are from all over the place. Yes, that's great. And we all do many different things, right? Some of us right now, we might not have a job. Some of us might be starting a new job. Some of you might be a small business owner. Some of you might be a CEO in a huge corporation. It doesn't matter where you are in your career right now, but managing up is going to be a very important thing for you to focus on. To paraphrase Daniel Bradford, the co-author of Influencing Up, those people that are at higher levels in the organization, they tend to go deaf. And those at lower levels of the organization, they tend to develop laryngitis. So I believe that these afflictions can be cured and it's all about relationships, which is what we are exploring in Managing Up, developing effective relationships at all levels, and as I like to call it affectionately, bossing the boss. By the time we're done this afternoon, you will have busted assumptions laying all over the floor. I hope you have room for those. And you will also have some tips and techniques that you can use right away to help you with better boss bossing. Now, since 
we're trying to work from where we are to where we'd like to be from our SOS, same old stuff to wow. The first thing that you're going to need to do is be ready for change, to change something. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to physically change something about your appearance. I'm taking my ring off of my left hand and putting it on my right, which is uncomfortable for me. I'd like each one of you to change something physically about your appearance. Now remember, you can only take off so much and still remain professional. Please remain professional, even though you're not on video. And, and oh, originally from Lansing, Michigan, I just saw that. So also what I'd like you to put in the chat is what did you change? What did you just change? And I invite you to keep whatever you changed. Oh, your glasses, how are you gonna see? <laughs> Bracelet, tuck my shirt in. Okay, took off earrings. I invite you to try and keep this new way of being for as long as you can. We will check in with you later, okay? So managing up, what does that mean? It's, it's a process, it's a continuous process. It's not just a one-time event where you're consciously partnering with superiors that are inside your organization and sometimes we forget also externally like vendors or people that you, you know, work with outside of the organization, connecting with them at all different levels. And you're looking for the best results for you, for them, and for the organization. Now, why would you care about that? Why would it matter to you? Well, part of it is it can make your work and your life easier if you're partnering and connecting at different levels. I know one time when we were doing some re-engineering in the power industry, and we were all, a big group of us were sitting in an, uh, a conference room in a meeting, and we were asking these questions about, you know, what is the executive, what do you think? You know, maybe, you know, would he want us to do this, that? And I kind of looked at, at them as a new engineer, like, why don't we just go ask him? So if you already had connections with them and maybe weren't afraid of them, then it would be very comfortable and easy to go down the hall and ask some questions and clarify things. Managing up can also give you opportunities. When people know what your skills are, when they know what you're capable of, then they can offer you some opportunities you might not have gotten if they didn't know about you. So I'm a crazy creative. I'm an engineer, but a crazy creative. And one of the executives in our company, when deregulation was coming through for the power industry, he invited me to help the accountants come up with a training class so that everyone could understand profit centers. So I made a game where everybody owned power plants, things happened, they made decisions, they got to see their bottom line. And I would never have had that opportunity, and maybe it even led me into speaking and training too, if this executive didn't know me a little bit better and know that I was a crazy creative. Your leadership skills are also highlighted, and it also, we know that a lot of times people leave a company because of the manager. So, if you are connecting to those at all different levels and people encouraging those underneath you to connect to, they will have a better experience with their manager and maybe they will stick around. So there's a lot of good reasons to do this. Now, I want you all to take your either right or left hand, doesn't matter, and bring your thumb and index finger together. I'd like you to bring your hand to your chin. Bring your hand to your chin. <laughs> it doesn't matter if your hand is still up here or you're actually on your chin. There's nothing wrong with you. It just means you're probably more visual than you are auditory. So if you would put in the chat box, are you a chinner or a cheeker? I know when I got this first done to me that I just had my hand up here and I kept going, my hand is on my chin. My hand is on my chin. <laughs> but it just means you're more visual than you are auditory. So nothing wrong with you. Oh, we're getting a lot of visual. We're getting a lot of chinners. Ah, maybe you've seen this before. Maybe you just are auditory. So I'd like to, knowing that a lot of you are visual, to use some pictures to help us illustrate some of these topics. Now we're talking about going from SOS to WOW with managing up where you are. I wanna illustrate that and then I'm gonna ask you to do a little exercise. So I've picked a picture here of a totem pole, and this is my situation as far as my managing up. Now granted, I have my own business, and I am the only one, I'm at the top of that totem pole, 
But in the fitness industry, I'm at the bottom. I'm a group exercise instructor. So if I have any ideas, it's got to work its way up, club manager, my fitness manager, all the way to the CEO if it ever gets there, right? So how I'd like things to be, the wow, the well on the way, is I'd like it to be just like a box of chocolates where each one of us has different qualities, but we're connecting with everyone in the box and we can suggest ideas, we can talk to people, we can all work together this way instead of having to maybe never get my idea to the top. So I want you to start thinking about what does managing up look for you personally right now and another visual for yourself of what you would like it to look like. So I've got a few pictures that I'm going to show you of some possibilities for you of what it might look like. Maybe it's like butting heads all the time. <laughs> Relationships aren't too great. That could be a possibility for you. Maybe it feels like you're walking alone on the sand and that you don't have any support from anyone, right? It's all about all on you. Or it could be like a vertical wall where any of you rock climbed before. <laughs> it's pretty difficult. It feels like you're just climbing up and up and up all the time. So those are some possibilities for where you are and where you're stuck. And here's a couple possibilities for how you'd like it to look. You're all on the boat. You're all uh, got different talents and skills in different places on the boat. You're moving in the right direction. The other boat appears to be going in a different direction, but isn't that true all the time? And here we have our uh, artist tools. So it's like you have a lot of connections. You've got a lot of tools that you can use and you're managing up. And also here is making connections with people, sharing information, uh, partnering, seeing how you can work together in the future. So what I want you to do right now is to pick two pictures, either by going on your computer and Googling. There's a Pixabay uh, app out there that has free pictures in there you can look through. Maybe you've got some magazines or something around you. You could draw a picture. I want you to do two of where you are and where you would like to be with managing up. You can also just write. You can just write a sentence or a phrase or two of how things look for you and how you'd like things to look. I'll give you about a minute to do that. And I would also, as you get that, as you find your picture or you describe your situation, I would like you to put SOS equals in the chat box and wow equals. So SOS, or you can put now and future. But I'd like you to share either what's on your picture or what is uh, your phrases that you've used. So we'll give you just about a minute or so to look for your description of SOS and your description or picture of WOW. somebody asking to explain SOS and wow. They may have missed that. Okay. So the SOS is the same old stuff. The place you are right now with managing up. Maybe you've only connected with your boss, your immediate boss, but you haven't started to develop relationships at any other level. Maybe you're so buried in your work that you don't even have time to talk to other people. So, oh, I like teamwork and dream work is the ultimate goal. And so, and the wow is where would you like things to be? That would be very easy to knock on the door of an executive and ask a question or, or get some time with them. So the same old stuff is where are you now? And the wow is how would you like things to change? What would you like to see differently as far as uh, your managing up situation? Thirty more seconds. Totem pole with various arms. Ooh, that's an interesting SOS. I'm currently stuck in heavy mud, <laughs> walking lonely. Wow, we'd like to be making connections and networking and traveling worldwide. Wow, it's collaborative. Wow, on the same page, supported and paid fairly. Would like collaborative prestige, doing well in relationships, on the relationships. From firefighter to future strategist. 
Very good. So you've got a good idea of where you are and where you'd like to be. I want you to keep that visual and as we go through the different exercises and techniques, see how that you could utilize those to make your move to wow. So who really, really, really wants to move from SOS to wow? Who really wants it? Who would love for that to happen? First person that chats me, oh, there is Desilee James. <laughs> Desilee James was the very first one. Uh, email me and I will send you a prize, okay? I'll send you a copy of my book and another little prize with that. So you were the first one. Me, I would, I'd love to see that. So let's do this. How are we gonna get there? Here's the plan. First look at the assumptions, because I believe that this is where most of us struggle, is the stories we tell ourselves hold us back. We'll look at who are we partnering with and who might we need to partner with that we aren't. We have basis, a great foundation for any relationship is trust. How does your trust look? What things could you do to build trust? Then getting to know the other person with their strengths and their weaknesses, their work styles, their expectations. If we don't do anything, then nothing's gonna change. So we've got to take a risk. We've got to take a risk. You're welcome, Desilee. Okay, so we will also be looking at risk taking. And then the last piece I'm trusting, well, I'm not trusting, I'm hoping that a lot of you haven't had to deal with or aren't dealing with less than ideal bosses, but we will uh, target that. So I know there's been some questions coming in before this webinar, and we will address those. There are a few less than ideal bosses. So the first piece is assumptions. Think about the stories that you tell yourself. Like, Oh, the executives don't have time for me, and I try to share my ideas, but they never listen to me. Or it's we just have opposite personalities, it's never going to work. I don't need to manage up all the way. I've got my work to do, and I just connect with my boss, and that's all I need. So there's some stories that you tell yourself about managing up. What I would like you to do right now is take out a paper and pen or on your computer, anywhere you'd like to, I'm going to ask you to make a list of all the stories that you tell yourself, all the stories you hear other people, like we can't be friends with them, all those kind of things. And we're going for the longest list. I don't start yet, so get ready to write or type in your computer, but we're going for the longest list of all the stories that we tell ourselves or that we've heard other people say about managing up. And remember, there are ones, there's examples right here. You can use some version of mine. Or you can also, um, you know, just write all those things like, whoa, they don't have time for me, whatever it is. So on your mark, the longest list of assumptions we have about managing up, get set, go. You don't have to put them in the chat, just on your own, making your own list. We'll give you about 20 more seconds, 20 more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Count the number of items on your list Enter that in the chat box. The number that's the highest will win a prize for me. Eight's the highest number I'm seeing right now. Three with a sad face. <laughs> well, maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> okay, so it looks like we'll let a few more people go in there. It looks like eight from Rashida. Koliosha, that you might be the winner. So if you win anything, you need to email me so I can send you your prize. Now I'd like you to post one of your assumptions in the chat box. Post one of your assumptions in the chat box. 
My email address is margaret at margaretajohnson.com and margaret is spelled M-A-R-G-A-R-E-T. So I'm seeing that I'm an introvert. I don't like to talk, but when needed, I, they can't relate. They don't have the time. Everything has to go through the supervisor. I'm too new on my job to manage up. I'm not sure if they're having a good day. <laughs> I'm just a worker, I can easily be replaced. Okay, so there's a lot. They're not accessible. I don't wanna draw attention to myself. Oh, these are super, these are great. Okay, so what I want you to do is hold on to your list for a minute, hold on to your list. You can also, maybe you've seen somebody else's and you're like, oh, that's one for me too, all right? Let's see how true these assumptions might be. I'm posting a story up here on the screen, I'm going to leave it up here. And what I'd like you to do is read through these sentences, read through the story, and then I'll ask you a few questions about the story. Okay, so take a minute to read my story about the businessman. Okay, I'm leaving it up there. You're all reading the same story. <laughs> When I make a statement, I want you to put in the chat box, is it true? So put a T for true. Is it false? Put an F for false or put a question mark if you don't know. So T for true, F for false or question mark you don't know, all right? Okay, here we go. The first statement is, a man appeared after the owner had turned off the store lights. A man appeared after the owner had turned off the store lights. I'm seeing true, false, question mark, <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> okay, the actual right answer is you don't know. Nowhere does, nowhere does it state that the man who turned off the lights was the owner. Okay, let's try just a couple more. The second one is the robber was a man. True, false, or don't know. The robber was a man. True, question mark, question mark, true, 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 question mark. <laughs> a couple don't knows. All right, actually you don't know because it doesn't state directly that it was a robber. Okay, it doesn't say the reason that he asked for cash, right? It didn't say that it was a robber. We don't know. And then let's go with one more question, last one. The man who appeared did not demand money. The man who appeared did not demand money. True, false. All right, I'm seeing a lot of falses on this one, and that's correct. He did appear and demand money. And there's a bunch more questions, but the point of it is, is we don't really know. We're all looking at lots of falses coming in. Good job. We're looking at the same information. We kind of filled in the blanks, right? And uh, when we're asking these specific questions, we really don't know. So I'm not trying to tell you that um, we don't really know anything at all, but so a lot of times we can make up some stories and look at, you know, what we see and make, you know, fill in the blanks. So there's amygdala hijack, unconscious bias. There's all sorts of brain theory that we won't get in deep into today, but I'm betting that some of you have seen the ladder of inference. So we observe some data. We have some experiences. We select data from what we observe. Then we start to make assumptions, right? We put meaning onto these. And from our assumptions, we draw conclusions. And then our beliefs about the world are adopted from these conclusions and we take action based on our beliefs. So here's an example in the fitness world in my indoor cycle class. Those classes are typically sold out, right? Everybody is trying to get in there, so there's usually a waiting list. And one day when I came in to teach, my class had a waiting list. A brunette was standing by the side watching a blonde get onto a bike. And she said, I'm higher up on the waiting list. That's my bike. She's taking my bike. <laughs> well, I needed to go check the list at the front desk and see who was supposed to have the bike. But she says, she made some comment about blondes and entitlement or something. And, and at the time it was like, whoa. And she said a few more things, but it really wasn't that bad. But it was very obvious that some blonde had done something to her. Now she had this observation, right? Here another blonde was taking her bike now. And, and this is what we do. We all do it. 
well, it turns out the blonde was supposed to be on the bike and the brunette apologized and all was good and we all got to ride. But the um, point of that is that we do this all the time. So these assumptions that we have about managing up, we might have seen one thing, we might have had something happen to us before and we start to believe that. When I first started working in the power company, uh, I was from Michigan, I'm down here in Texas, and I was the first female engineer, and I was from Michigan, and I talked funny. So they all wanted to meet me, so executives were coming in to meet me, and I was just, oh, hi, Tom, hi, Mark, whatever, and hi, Susan, and this guy that worked with me after the executive would leave a run down, and do you know who that was? And I'd go, yeah, that's Tom, or that's Susan. He goes, they're the executive, whatever, and I'm like, I didn't know I was supposed to be scared, right? So in the beginning, you didn't know, and then you develop these ideas. So what I want you to do with your assumptions, you can pick someone else's that you saw in the chat, or with yours, I want you to pick one of those and think about what if that wasn't true, what would you do differently? If it wasn't true, what would you do differently? If they really had the time for you, and I'll show you in just a little bit of how you can get time with them. I got an hour with the CEO. So looking at your assumptions, right? Now we need to look at who do we need to partner with? Who are you partnering with right now? Who are you managing up to? Are you just working with your immediate boss because they make all the connections above for you? Are you trying to partner with people but it's not going very well? Who do you need to be connected to? Now there's three areas to think about for connection. There's personal, so like the people that you work with, you enjoy, maybe your lunch buddies, something like that, your personal connections. The second part of it is operational to get work done. You've got to have connections. And the third piece of that is strategic for vision, for your ideas, for where you can see the organization, yourself, um, anything going. So on a personal level, an operational level, and a strategic level, this is where you want to start to look for, am I partnering on those levels? Who am I partnering with? What I want you to think about is, is there one person that you're not partnering with right now that you'd like to partner with? So write that down or put that in your brain. My husband and I have been married 36 years. And when we got married in the Catholic Church, we had to go through premarital counseling. So we had some time with the priest and then we met with a sponsor couple for four sessions. We'd go over a questionnaire and then we would we'd do the questionnaire ourselves, and then my husband and I would get together and look at our answers, and then we'd talk with the sponsor couple. Now, one of those was on finance, and they asked you, how much money would you spend without, <laughs> without consulting your partner? And I had like, I don't know, $1,000, $2,000, and I cut it down to $500. My husband had, he had like $25, <laughs> and he changed it and crossed it out to 50. So when we got together, right, there's this, big difference, right? And so it was very important to get together and know those differences and how we were gonna to work together and it's working, it's been working for 36 years, but one time he called me up and he's talking about this software and uh, I was like, oh gosh, he goes, can I get it? I go, how much is it? I thought it was gonna be very expensive and he goes, $25 and I just laughed because of that uh, premarital counseling. So you wanna partner with people, you wanna have the designed alliance, you know, how are you gonna to work together? You know, what are your uh, quirks and, per, you know, how do you work, your personality styles, all that. Get to know that. But first pick out who you want to work with. And remember, it's not always just an executive, right? It can be the admin, the connection to the executive. If you can show them how your information or what you want to meet with them is valuable, if they can understand that, you'll get the time. Think about champions for you. Think about other people that can connect you. And think about, look at influencers in your organization or in the industry. So make sure you've got somebody picked out for your for partner of who you're going to think about after you leave this session that you're going to start uh, connecting to. The foundation for partnerships and relationships is trust, or at least I think so. And there's a country western song. Now I'm from Michigan. I'm a rock and roll, Bob Seger and Motown girl. But I've been in Texas a long time. You can probably tell by the little drop in my G's. And there's a Maren Morris song that Maren Morris song, if the bones are good. So if the trust, if the foundation is good. So I believe for me, these are very important. Consistency, integrity, communication, consideration. 
Now I know if another fitness instructor who works with lawyers and they will come to her office at, you know, five to five in the afternoon when she's got to leave and go teach, you know, her other job and they'll dump things on her. And so she'll sometimes have me back her up because she's never sure. So there's kind of no consideration for that. So this trust is so important. And I have, when I was working in the power industry and deregulation was coming through, I was asked to find a tool, a financial model tool that we could use to understand the new market. And I was given that project and told, good luck, mission impossible. They didn't think it could be done. I put together a team of individuals and I had to give reports. And when I did my first report, I wanted to, if you're familiar with Mission Impossible, they pulled out a tape way back then out of an envelope and played the tape and then the tape would self-destruct. But there's that music, dum, 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 dum. And that's how I wanted to start my presentation to these executives and directors. But I know about trust and I knew about my manager. So I checked with him first, told him what I was gonna do and he okayed it. So then he knew that in the future, if there was ever a question like that, I would check with him. He didn't have to worry about it. So those are some of the ways that we can build trust. We can build trust uh, through character, through competence. This information up here is from Stephen M. R. Covey from the Speed of Trust. Some of you may have read that. There's character attributes, competence attributes, and a category that includes both. You know, like, do you talk straight? When you make a mistake, do you right your wrong? Are you always trying to tell people, you know, be so right, or are you listening to them first? So what I'd like you to do with this trust page right here is think about for yourself, which one of those, which one of those, what if upper executives are not interested in gaining the trust of certain people? Yeah, that's, we'll get into that one, okay? Or we'll hold on to that one. That's a good question. And I think that that's true. There's politics, there's, uh, there's little cliques, there's little groups, there's little empires, and there's uh, a lot of that uh, kind of thing going on and it's all part of work, like it's the other side of your work. But for you, I want you to look at this list and think about one of these that maybe you need to work on a little bit more. Is there one of these that you know might be, um, you know, for me, I'm a very, I'm a driven kind of person, but I'm also this very charismatic personality, right? And so I've always got, you talk about something, I've got something to say too. So as a coach, I went through professional listener training. <laughs> and so to listen first, because in our head, we're always trying to think of something else. So I want you to, transparency, yes, a good one. So I want you to think about which one is important for you. Do you need to work on that a little bit? And then think about what do you need from other people? What's the most important thing? And what kinds of things can you do to build trust a little bit more through other people so they can see that you are trustworthy? And what might you need to ask some people for so that you can trust them more? So a lot of this is about some conversations. Okay, so think about that and what you might do and what you might be looking for in other people, clarify that. As we're starting to develop these relationships, have these connections and have conversations, we need to understand what our strengths and our weaknesses are and also what the strengths and the weaknesses are of the other person, other people, so that we can partner. I know that one of my uh, son's friends in college when she started working, she was super organized, an amazing researcher. She got to partner with the executives and one of them a great speaker, but not so great on the research and the organization. She did that part and helped him with his presentations. Of course, now she's making the presentations. But when we can look at what our strengths are and what their weaknesses are, that's a great way to partner. Um, if any of you have ever heard of Now Discover Your Strengths or the Strengths Finder, this is a great book for those of you that like assessments and want to uh, look on and work with how can I use my strengths more? How can I work around some of my weaknesses? It's an assessment, you can do it online. You can also, if you buy the book, make sure you don't buy a used copy because the secret code will always be taken. But they look at, we have natural strengths. We have things that we just, maybe you're a great organizer. Maybe you can see where something could be improved just a little bit so you're a maximizer. Maybe you're charismatic and you can connect people. 
whatever it is, you've got these strengths. And look at the other person. Remember that person you want to partner with? You can find out from other people that are connected with them. You can find out by observing what um, they uh, are really good at or where they might need some help. But remember our triangle from the beginning about the best for you, them, and the organization. So kind of tie these things, the strengths, how you can help them with making things better for all three of those, looking at the goals and the values and the mission of the organization. When I was uh, in technical sales, my first job in technical sales after the power company, and one of the executives asked me, uh, he says, you've done this and that and this, and you've you know, got this kind of background. How can you help our organization be better? What can you do for us? And I had never gotten that question before in my entire career. Never been asked, what are you good at and how can you help us? That's a beautiful question and I want to invite you to ask that of other people and also share that with higher ups too. So thinking more strategically, thinking more strategically. Another thing that you want to look at is how do their work styles and their expectations. And I know someone asked a question about how do I get people to take the personality style assessment? Well, you could show them the benefit of knowing, uh, you know, how to work with people differently. Are they a driver? Are they a, you know, a congenial person? Are they data oriented? Are they more into people or more into results? Are they assertive? Are they non-assertive? Uh, all that information is very helpful. So, one example is I was working in technical sales and there was an invoice that needed to be paid and Gary, the manager, asked me if it should be paid. And me, the storyteller, says, well, there's a story behind it and in order for you to know that it should be paid, I've got to share this story. So I started to tell this story and he let me go for a little bit and he goes, Margaret. And I go, yes. And yes, Gary. And he goes, should I pay the invoice? And I said, yes. Boom. That was it. It's all he wanted to know. He trusted me, right? He just had a question, wanted the answer. So way back when, when there was still a lot of email before texting, I mean, I would just send one question to that kind of person and get back one little quick, short yes or no, never give them more than a few questions. So knowing their work style, are they a texter? Are they an in-person? Are they a Zoomer? Are they, you know, we can't really do a whole lot of in-person, but maybe you do have some opportunities depending on what's going on with your work. Find out uh, their personalities. You can really probably usually tell a little bit about that. I know when I first, um, when I was coaching and I had an executive client, I tend to be a late night person and I was up till about four in the morning working on a book and doing all sorts of other work. And I was just about to shut my computer down at four o'clock in the morning. And, but I had a thought to send to this executive client and I sent it off thinking I'll shut my computer down. She'll read it tomorrow morning or in the morning. And all of a sudden, before I could shut my computer off, I got an email right back. And it was this executive, Mona, was like so excited. She goes, oh my God, you're all ready to start the day just like me. What are you going to do? And I said, I'm going to sleep. Have a good run. So knowing those kind of things can be part of this, help you to uh, connect better and develop these relationships. Another thing is values. I have a values exercise. If any of you are interested in that, I will be happy to share that with you for free. And um, we can do a short little call about it or it's pretty obvious you can just work through it. But knowing what your values are and what's important and what is important to these executives and higher ups that you wanna connect with. And it's really a lot of fairly easy to tell because we had a CEO at my technical job, technical sales job. He would walk up and down the hallways you know, yelling, are you making any money today? What are you doing that's making us some money? Go make some money. It was all about money and he knew making money was his value, right? <laughs> well, it should be for a company, but. So I had some ideas of what we could do at that company to improve things, maybe to make some more money. So I just caught him in the hallway one day and I said, Don, I've got some ideas on how we can make some more money. If you wanna know, just, you know, catch me. That man did a 180, turned right around and told me to get with his admin to set up an appointment and I got an hour with him, an hour with someone who you think doesn't have time for you. But if you can connect to their values, connect to what's important, take what you have in your idea and connect to their values, then you'll be very uh, successful. 
It's also important to think about not just you managing up, but the people that report to you, other people, helping them manage and support you. If they're not having conversations and asking you, right, things, can we sit down and talk about, you know, uh, working together better or looking over this process? Or if they're not doing that, then they might be afraid to. So encourage them to do that. Encourage it not with just you, but encourage them and help them to also make connections at other different levels so people know what they do and they can get some opportunities too. So help uh, support them. Now I know I've had a question uh, from the group before this webinar started was, but what about remote? <laughs> How can I manage up if we're all remote and these people aren't walking in the hallway and I can't catch them in the elevator? Well, my point to you is there's a, another speaker who works, I work with creativity and risk taking and possibilities and mindset. And uh, she also works with creativity. What she's done is she's connecting all the people that she work, uh, is connected to on LinkedIn in little 15 minute networking random groups. So she'll like ask people, if you wanna do this, send me a note, sign up for an appointment. And she randomly connects them with another person. She gets in on the call. And so they're connecting in that way. So even though it's remote, even though it's remote, I think that's something that you might be able to do in your organization. You know, maybe suggest that they do that with people that don't know each other so everyone can get to know each other. Some teams that you might work with. Some kind of little random networking connection. Also, when you get into Zoom meetings, and if you're there early and you're not on mute, <laughs> well, if, even if you're on mute, you could chat, right? That you could just chat with some of the other people that are in there and then invite them to have a conversation after. Uh, or if there's executives in your meeting, your, your uh, work meeting, that you could kind of connect in that way or give them a phone call, call them up and ask them if they might have time to or if you could get on their calendar or work through their, their uh, assistant or something else. So even though it's remote, there are some ways that we could also connect this way. Okay. All right. If you don't do anything, nothing's gonna change. You're still gonna be an SOS, right? You won't get to wow. I had you change something at the beginning of our session, right? My ring is still on my right finger. It started on my left. If you did not change back, if you were able to stay for this whole time with this uncomfortable position, email me. I'll put you guys in a drawing, okay? Email me. Um, and I will put you in a drawing for some uh, gift certificates or gift cards or whatever. But I have hope for you because you stuck with something that was uncomfortable, but you found a way to be comfortable with that uncomfortable. And what happens a lot of times that my boots are still off. <laughs> okay, Stephen, great. <laughs> I kept the change. So email me, Margaret, M-A-R-G-A-R-E-T, at margaretajohnson.com, and I will get you guys in on a drawing. If there's not a whole lot of you, I'll give you all the prizes. If there's a whole bunch of you, I will uh, have to do a drawing. But my point is that a lot of times when, you know, we're talking about managing up, and for a couple of days, you're going to go, oh, yeah, I'm going to try that. I'm going to, you know, do this, call this up executive, or I'm going to connect to this person, or whatever you're going to do. You know, you're all excited about it. And then a couple days later, you go, I don't have time this week, maybe next week. And then in three weeks, you don't even remember who I am. And you're just back to, you know, SOS the same way it was. So I want you to stick with uncomfortable. And I want you to think about before we finish, what is that one thing you're going to do? And we'll do a five second rule and make sure you get yourself set up to do that. So if you don't do anything, I said, we're stuck in SOS. You need to send, you need to email me, okay? Email me your, your email address that way, all right? I may not be able to get the whole chat, we'll see. So to be able to have a change, you've got to take a risk. You've already got your goal. You've got your goal. You had your SOS where you were, and you had your wow, what you want things to look like. So your goal is to move in that direction. But take enjoyment and enthusiasm and reward yourself as you go along the journey. You've got to look at different ways to accomplish the goal. So you could start with a little bit, you know, maybe just uh, unmuting <laughs> before meetings start and start to chat with people. 
You could maybe start to do some different things with the LinkedIn. You could um, start to email some people. I send letters all the time to executives and I always get uh, answers back, okay? So you, there's different ways that you could accomplish your goal. Now, I know some of you have said, I've never, what if I've worked with these people for 10, 20 years and I've never even tried to uh, introduce myself to anyone at a higher level? It's never too late. And I know some of you may get tongue tied, some of you may get, don't know what to say. So there's a little uh, trick that I used when I was a young grade school girl. I had a crush on a guy named Philip, and every time I ran into him, I was very, uh, nervous and you know sometimes would be all tongue-tied so what I did is I started to write down some questions and things I could say to him if I ever ran into him and then when I, I would update my list depending on what was happening in the world and then when I did run into him I was ready I had a question and, and if I could just get over that first little hump so I encourage you that you know when you're getting into these meetings and there's gonna be some people in there that you'd like to connect with that you haven't connected with you, you probably have an inkling of who's gonna be there Write a few questions that if you ever get caught off guard or see someone that you weren't expecting, that you've got this little thing in your back pocket ready to go. Okay, so there's different ways to accomplish the goal. You've got to think about what kind of a risk taker you are. I do work with risk takers. I have an assessment called the Creatrix where you can actually assess where you are and you can increase your creativity and risk taking. Did you know that? If we were in person, we'd actually be playing red light, green light. And some of you, I don't think it's just a Michigan thing, but it's a game we played on the sidewalk where one person is it at the end of the sidewalk and the rest of the neighborhood is at the other end of the sidewalk. And the person who's it, for example, me, turns my back to the rest of the buds. And uh, whenever I say green light, they can run toward me. Whenever I say red light, they have to stop and I turn around and if they were moving, they go back to start. And the goal is to be the first person to get to it. So I like to use this in person. I have video if you want to see it <laughs> because it's a risk model. There's some baby steppers. There's some people that are bad out of hell, right? So some of you are just going to maybe read up on this or take some baby steps for this. Some of you are going to call up some executive and ask for a meeting tomorrow. So think about your risk taking tendencies. Which, um, which ones of you uh, you know, what are your tendencies and what is going to really work with your tendencies best? And then start to increase your reward and risk ratio by one, maybe practicing conversations with your buddies that you want to have with an executive or testing, right? Testing something out, doing a little prototype. There's also safety in numbers. So maybe a bunch of you or several of you or two of you could ask for something, ask for some meetings, ask for some type of connection and get that. And then it's all about then you got to take some action. Okay. So think about that one thing that you are going to do that you are going to take action on. And this last piece right here is our less than ideal bosses. Now, I worked for a few. The first thing is right here, remember we talked about assumptions. So understand their incompetence. What you think might be their incompetence, it might just be maybe one time you had an experience and so you think that that's what's wrong with them. Maybe they were overwhelmed and you don't even know what they're dealing with. Um, maybe they really aren't, um, you know, <laughs> deficient in emotional intelligence, but just because of the pressures that they're under, they're never able to really connect. So first you really got to do a little research, understand their incompetence, make sure that uh, you can check with other people, is that how they see things too? Check with people that know them really well. Whenever you go in and talk to them, make sure it's about you, not the boss. Saying, for me, you know, if when you know, here's what I need when I'm doing this. This is what I need. I would be more effective if I could have this, those kind of things. So make it about you. Don't go in there and say, you don't do this. You need to stop micromanaging. Dot, 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 right? So make sure it's about you. Can you step up? Can you lead up? If the other, if the manager, if they aren't doing their job, I had a coaching client, Shannon, who got promoted and her manager was not a very effective manager. 
what she did very tactfully, very carefully without insulting them and actually helping them was able to connect with higher ups, uh, work it so that she had like a, not a free reign, but um, opportunities to connect with other people and get things done. But she also in that whole process kind of helped him to become a better leader. So it's not stepping on their toes and bypassing them all the time, but it's a very beautiful, intricate dance of stepping up and leading up when they aren't. Should you rat them out? <laughs> I, I don't recommend it, but I have done it. <laughs> and I have been um, successful. One was at the gym where they had a supervisor manager that was harassing some of the instructors. In fact, a lot of the instructors and it wasn't a good thing. I was having a few issues too, but I just organized the instructors, connected with HR. All the instructors had their, their data and everything written down. And um, I didn't even have to say anything about the issues I had and HR took care of it and that supervisor was out. But in the corporate uh, world, when I was a leader, a manager or an engineer, I did say something. One time I asked to be moved and I did get moved because I had a reputation where I they knew me and they trusted me. So it's really all about relationships. I don't recommend writing them out. The politics and everything um, uh, can really be a dangerous place to dance, but it is possible. So connect with HR, connect with your buddies. <laughs> be careful about that. And the last thing is if you do have a, um, if you do have less than ideal bosses to make sure you're taking care of yourself you know, eating right, exercising, doing some of those things that bring you joy that so that you're not so stressed out. So those are some tips there if you do have a less than ideal boss. What I'd like to ask you to do is to put in the chat what you are committing to do. What is the one thing that you are taking away from this that you are going to start doing? Maybe it's what you're already doing, but you haven't. Now, there's a a speaker called uh, Mel Robbins, I love her, she's got the five second rule, and she says, okay, if you don't actually do something right away, you might never actually do anything about it. So I recommend that you take your phone and you go to your alarm and you set a time where you're going to actually do one of these things. Because if you don't promise, if you don't start within five seconds, if you don't decide to do, it might never happen. So let's reach out to more people and connect. Self-care is critical. People will manage what they can't master and master what they can't manage. Okay, so Keith, let's go ahead to some questions and answers that I might not have addressed. Oh, start your own business. Congratulations. Plan on listening first. Very good. All right, as, as those come in, here's a question, Margaret. Um, how do I encourage those who report to me to develop a strategy toward developing these kinds of relationships with me and those above me. So trying to get people who report to you to open up and embrace this sort of philosophy of, of managing up, which I think is an interesting question. So one is to actually invite them to have some conversations with you so they can see the example of how that might work. Uh, kind of sit down with them and have them pick someone besides you that they might want to connect with and help them make a strategy. I know someone had asked for a strategy and some of the questions and the strategy really is here is look at your assumptions, right? Figure out who you wanna partner with. How are you building trust? Look at strengths, weaknesses, personalities and whatever and start to have a conversation with them about how you can do that. So being an example to those people and inviting some conversations between the two of you that are examples of this partnering or designed alliance and then help them strategize with who do they wanna to connect to you know, are they looking for someone for operations, for strategic, for whatever, what might be some of their ideas that they want to move up uh, in the organization and kind of get them some help and some champions and connections. And I think you can also help them understand the importance of it because they'll miss out, like I said, on opportunities and uh, work will be easier if they do make those connections, even for introverts. There's different ways for introverts to do it too. Got it. That's great. Okay. A um, couple people have asked about office bullies and a strategy for dealing with them. Any thoughts there? I mean, that's, that's such a, <laughs> it's such a deep tangled mess of whatever. I think you have to step back and look at it from a 
logical standpoint, which is very hard to do because there's a lot of emotions involved in that. Involved in that. So there's a process called the Six Hats by De Bono, and it looks at the situation first. You know, stepping back, look at what assumptions are you making about this this person. Uh, stepping back and looking at what are the facts, what are the emotions, what do you really want from them, you know, what behavior change do you want from them, what behavior change are you willing to make. Sometimes it's very difficult to have a conversation with them because they are a bully. Uh, needs to be looked at as far as is this an issue that the supervisor needs to address first. I know I've had a lot of people sometimes when I'm working with them in my classes that the supervisor is not doing anything and the supervisor allowing it to continue. So, I mean, it's my answers could go all over the place depending on the specific situation, but I would look at first of looking at the emotions and the facts behind it. What's happening? What do you want different? What would you be willing to do in connection with that? And figuring out is it uh, safe or wise or best for you to have that conversation or for you to first go to another person, um, your supervisor or somewhere else that you can get some help in them doing the conversation or you. Got it. Got it. We got several questions coming in. I'm going to try to get to as many as we can in just a couple minutes that we have here, but advice on managing up if you have a less than ideal boss and, and you're new to a role. So this person is one month in and they're doing some shadowing before they go fully remote. So a lot going on there, but new, they're remote and how do they manage up with a less than ideal boss? Uh, well, I'd start by uh, first kind of writing down some of the things that are going on that aren't working for you and writing down all the things that you would like to see and like to have just so you have that kind of on the side. But know as new, it's best to just kind of observe for a little bit before you start coming in and trying to ask for certain things. But um, also look at are these assumptions and is this just happening to me? Are these happening to other people too? But start to make a list of things that you need to have that you would like to have and start to see if you could pick out the one thing that you need and start to have little conversations like get to know that person things that you have in common start to develop that relationship so that when you bring up that kind of first thing you're already comfortable talking to them got it got it we have a somebody asking about the name of the book was this uh, strength finder so oh, yeah. There's actually the original book was called Now Discover Your Strengths, which is more focused on a manager managing people's strengths. And the uh, latest version of the same thing is called Strengths Finder 2.0 by Tom Rath, R-A-T-H. Now you can do the assessment on um, online or you can buy the book. But this one is more focused on, I believe, on the personal utilizing your strengths, whereas Now Discover Your Strengths appears to be more of if you're managing people how to manage their strengths got it okay here's another one how do i and you talked about this a little bit but any other thoughts uh, how do i build relationships when you're a telecommuter it's hard to raise morale when you're working from home yeah we talked a little bit about that i think one that i mentioned was having you know connecting people for a little 15 minute talks to just to get to know each other i know as coaches uh, in the Clear Lake area, we're having a once a month meeting of coffee where we just get together and, you know, talk. And there's usually a topic that is brought up that we want to talk about, but it's getting to know people and things like that. So if you're a telecommuter, I think that to reach out in some different ways, you know, send some physical notes to people, send some emails to, or offer and invite them to just a virtual coffee. All right. Can I, can I ask one more question here? Um, how do you handle a boss who did not hire you? So they were, they, they got you through a merger acquisition, but they weren't the person who hired you. Any tips there? It's very important for you to find out what they need, what their uh, goals, mission, values are, so you know how to support them, and to let them know what your strengths are right in the beginning, because you want to make sure they know how valuable you are. So I would reach out to them immediately with that. You can start the conversation that way. I know that through this merger and acquisition, you know, we're brand new to each other. I would love to have a conversation around, you know, what your mission and goals and what you are really trying to work on so I can share with you my strengths that will really help you make that happen. So 
So I would reach out as soon as you can and not, not wait. All right, perfect. Is now a good time to do the drawing? Sure. Okay. Well, I confess to have already done the drawing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was prepared not doing it on the spot, but I put it into this random result generator. Put okay. everybody's name in there. And if I call your name, I'm going to call out a name. And if I call your name, uh, just put your name in the chat to us and I will know that you're here. And if you're not here, then we'll move on to the next person. Okay. Um, Arion Tillman. If you're here, say you're here, give you a few seconds. And if not, we'll move on to the next person. All right. Uh, Edie, I've asked, they're asking me to repeat the name. Okay. Arion Tillman. All right. The next person, if, if they're not here, is Edie Falwell. Edie, going once. Going twice. All right. Oh, there we go. Edie is here. Okay, Edie. So Edie gets the book and the one hour of coaching. Very good. All right. And then we've got the second drawing for the $35 gift certificate to Amazon. And the name is Michelle Siv. Is Michelle on? Going once, going twice, no Michelle, okay, all right. If you know Michelle, don't tell her about this, it'll hurt her feelings, okay. <laughs> oh, Michelle is here, okay, there you go. So we're not gonna hurt any feelings, okay. Michelle, uh, you get the $35 Amazon gift certificate, very cool, all right. So Margaret, I know you got a couple of things to wrap up with here. Uh, yes, I wanted to invite everyone, if they'd like, to stay connected with creativity and risk-taking ideas and get a little guide on moving on up in the workplace. You can either use the QR codes right here or you can go to my website at Margaret A. Johnson. Uh, you also, as a gift for you being in my session, if you'd like to have a little strategy call with me that's free, you can sign up on my appointment desk. I want to invite everyone to go in a second drawing for these same things we just gave away. If you email me at margaret at margaret a. Johnson by July 31st with what you've tried, <laughs> based on what we've done today, if you uh, email me with what you tried, and if, you know, whether it was successful or not, doesn't matter, but you tried something, you'll be in a drawing for another book, coaching, and uh, Amazon, or if you want some other different gift card, I'm more than happy to switch out the gift card. So by July 31st, end of that midnight, uh, email me what you've done. All right, perfect. And thank you so much. Fantastic presentation. Really enjoyed it. I know everybody got a lot out of that. So thank you very much. And thank you everybody for attending. And if you enjoy these webinars that we do, the, the best thing you can do for us, what we really appreciate it, is just spread the word, forward the emails when you register, when you get those emails to friends or colleagues or anybody that you think might appreciate them. So we appreciate that. All right, so thanks everybody. Thanks again, Margaret. Thank you. All right.